The following video is a nonprofit essay about the movie Star Wars The Last Jedi. Video Games in the World is in no way affiliated with Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy, Ryan Johnson, nor the cast and crew of The Last Jedi. All footages are under fair use and Star Wars and all related likenesses are owned by their respective companies. Hello Star Wars fans, I am John, host of Video Games in the World. Five years ago, Star Wars Episode VIII The Last Jedi premiered. It was one of the most awaited movies of the year and it premiered during the holiday season, 10 days before Christmas Day. Upon its release, people had mixed feelings about the movie. Some people liked it, others did not. There are those who have legitimate reasons for either liking or disliking the movie. But there were so many who either loved or hated the movie and reacted to people so negatively to extremes despite their positive or negative thoughts about The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi is a 2017 movie written and directed by Ryan Johnson. It stars Daisy Ridley as Rey, Adam Driver as Kylo Ren, John Boyega as Finn, Oscar Isaac as Poe Dameron, Kelly Marie Tran as Rose Tico, Laura Dern as Admiral Amelin Holdo, Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker, Carrie Fisher as Leia Organa, and Andy Serkis as Supreme Leader Snoke. In this video, we will talk about how people think whether they still liked or disliked The Last Jedi. It is not to condemn those who liked it or disliked it, but have a talk on why people still think it's bad or good. This is Star Wars Episodes 8, The Last Jedi. The movie begins immediately after the events of Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens. Although the Resistance is successful in destroying the Starkiller base, things are not getting any better as the First Order is still very powerful. The Resistance is forced to flee from their base in the search of a world to rebuild and fight alongside whatever allies they have left. Meanwhile, Rey arrives on the planet of Akto to learn the ways of the Force from Luke Skywalker and recruit him into the Resistance. While Kylo is determined to put an end to Luke, Snoke himself is determined to crush the Resistance once and for all and assert the First Order's dominance over the galaxy. Upon its release, the movie has grossed over $620.2 million in the United States and Canada and $712.5 million in other territories for a worldwide total of $1.333 billion. It was the eighth highest grossing film of the weekend, and by New Year's Eve, the movie crossed the $1 billion mark, making it the third Star Wars film to do so. The Last Jedi was the highest grossing film of 2017. However, it remains 16th place as the highest grossing film of all time behind movies, such as Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part II, Black Panther, and The Force Awakens. Criticism for the movie was positive. Rotten Tomatoes had 91% of positive reviews from critics, giving it an 8.1 out of 10. Its consensus read that the movie honors the saga's rich legacy while adding some surprising twists and delivering all the emotion-rich action fans could hope for. Metacritic assigned a score of 84 out of 100, based on 56 critics indicating universal acclaim. Metacritic analysis found that the film was the 25th most mentioned movies as the best of the year and the 22nd most mentioned as the best of the decade film rankings. Mark Solar Seeds of RogerEbert.com explained that the movie works equally well as an earnest adventure full of passionate heroes and villains and a meditation on sequels and franchise properties in which the film includes multiple debates over whether one should replicate or reject the stories and symbols of the past. Mr. Seeds gave the movie a 4 out of 4 stars praising the surprises and all the risks that it took. Other critics have praised the movie for Ryan Johnson's new take on the series where Rolling Stone's Peter Travis, Richard Roper of the Chicago Sun-Times, Will Gompertz of BBC News, and Alex Leadbeater of Screen Rant as well. 
George Lucas, who was not involved in the production of the film, praised Johnson's beautifully made work, although his review of The Force Awakens was negative. There were some critics that felt that the movie was flattened down, ironed out, and appallingly purified, according to The New Yorker's Richard Brody. Kay Taylor of The Globe and The Mail gave the movie a 2 out of 4 stars and stated that, as it seeks to uphold a giant cultural legacy, this unfolding trilogy struggles to maintain a balance that often seems just out of reach. And finally, Variety Magazine's Owen Gleiberman criticized the film for being too derivative of the past films, noting, it's now repeating things that have already been repeated, becoming an official monument to nostalgia. According to scientific polling, the audience reception for The Last Jedi was highly positive. On an A to F scale, majority of the audiences gave The Last Jedi an A. A lot of people believe that this was a very well done new take on Star Wars. Rey attempts to recruit Luke into the Resistance, but he is not willing and able to fight, feeling that he has failed Kylo Ren and that the Jedi should end. Rey tries to tell Luke that losing Kylo was not his fault upon learning his story. It was Kylo who lost himself to the darkness. She will learn three lessons about the Force. The Force is in all of us, not a power that the Jedi have. The Jedi Order is not what she thinks, and the Resistance needs someone that can do what is always right no matter what. Many enjoyed Luke Skywalker's story arc, which is about an old Jedi who has decided to stay in Octo to die after failing to save his nephew Ben Solo. His failure was too personal for him that he cut himself off from the Force and exiled himself to Octo to die. Yoda's unexpected appearance was considered to be one of the movie's greatest moments. Yoda will remind Luke that failure can teach people better than success. Although he has failed Kylo Ren, he can still help Rey. Kylo Ren's story arc is about inner conflict. In a scene with Snoke, we see how he is being manipulated, and then see him bashing the walls and breaking his mask as well. This shows that he's in conflict with both light and darkness. Paul Dameron's arc was about becoming a leader, but realizing that his actions has consequences. For example, when he leads an attack on a Dreadnought, he succeeds in leading the Bombers to destroy it, but at the same time it takes a major toll on the forces and resources of the Resistance that led to his demotion. When disobeying direct orders from a superior officer in the military, demotion can happen as well as a court-martial depending on how greatly deliberate the disobedience is. Rose Tico is one of the characters that many people didn't seem to appreciate very much. However, there is something that she said that rings very true to Finn. To fight not what she hates, but defend what she loves. While others were in an uproar about Luke's portrayal in the movie, many people believed that it was an unexpected moment when he threw the lightsaber away and it was on par with the character. This is due to his depression regarding failure and also making him more depressed about Han Solo's death in the events of The Force Awakens. Every Star Wars movie, be it of the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, the sequel trilogy, and stories of such as Rogue One, Solo, The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Andor have their good points as well as their flaws. People of course love the Star Wars franchise due to its storyline, visuals, music, acting, and so on. However, there are people who do not like certain things about it or just don't like it at all, since they're not much into it unlike other stuff they're into like either Star Trek or the MCU movie series. I can praise the movie for its visuals, the awesome space battle at the beginning of the movie, the music and acting performances as well. I gotta say that the actors did a great job in their performances. However, I felt sadness seeing Carrie Fisher because it will be the last time we will see her as her iconic character since she died a year prior to the film's release. Now, as much as I am critical of Luke acting like a total whiner for his failure, at least I praise the appearance of Yoda to tell him how failure is a teacher. When it comes to failure, I was always intolerant towards it because I felt that it was over and I would have to endure a lecture from my parents if I had a bad grade in the subject in school or college. 
but I was surprised when they would motivate me as well. When I failed, I would blame people around me. I would always try to prove that I was better than everyone. But people in my family, like my brothers, sisters, and cousins would tell me that blaming others for my problems would cause more trouble to me than solving them. Learn from your mistakes so that way you can succeed. So I gotta say, I found this part pretty relatable. I like the character of Rey since she tries not only to learn the ways of the Force, but to help Luke realize that the failure to save Ben was not his fault. I know so many people do not like her as they believe that she is a Mary Sue, but she is not a total Mary Sue as a lot of people think. She survived and fought her entire life on a desert planet. Rose's words to Finn were pretty true as well, such as not fighting against what you hate, but to protect those you love. There will be people and things that you hate, and it is a waste of time and energy to be complaining and be miserable all the time to bring them down to your level, for they say that misery loves company. I also liked the throne room fight since it was very well choreographed as well. Although I did not like how short the fight was between Finn and Phasma, at least it had some good choreography and loved that scene with the broken visor of her helmet. Gwendolyn Christie did an amazing job as Captain Phasma. Just as there are reasons of why people love The Last Jedi, there are people who have reasons for disliking or hating The Last Jedi. Some people believe that The Last Jedi breaks away from lore, that it doesn't feel like Star Wars, that it's a rehash of Empire Strikes Back, lazy writing, etc. What reasons there are that people hate or dislike The Last Jedi? One example is the Porgs. Some people find the Porgs to be very cute, and because of that, there have been many fan arts of these creatures native to the planet of Octo. However, these creatures had nothing to do with the film's plot. Many would compare them to the Ewoks in Return of the Jedi, but at least the Ewoks actually got involved in the battle versus the Empire. The Battle of Krait was not well liked as it felt like a rehash of the Battle of Hoth in The Empire Strikes Back. As for the Resistance trying to escape from the base, they realize that there is no exit except the front. That is until Luke shows up to fight Kylo Ren, giving the Resistance time to escape with the help of these Crystal Foxes, and then Rey showing up as well. Another reason why people dislike the movie is the character of Amelyn Holdo. Haldo takes over command of the Resistance while Leia Organa is recovering when she used the Force to pull herself back to the ship and lost consciousness. Poe takes issue with Haldo after she takes over, but what she did not reveal to Poe was her plan, which was that of all the ships would run until they ran out of fuel so she can safely evacuate everyone in the shuttle to the mineral planet, Crate. Some people were divided that her suicidal flight into Snoke's flagship at light speed as they felt that Admiral Akbar should have been given that type of send-off. Many people felt that the Canto Black Eat scene was the product of lazy writing as well as Ray's parents being nobodies, the slapstick comedy, Luke being force ghosted, etc. Some of these things I have mentioned are the very same things I have felt when it comes to why people dislike The Last Jedi. The thing with Rey being a nobody, I don't know what kind of writing is that because it doesn't make any sense to me. My criticisms are also about character development. Although I like that Rose Tickle said about defending what you love, I believe that she should have been given more of a story about herself rather than just someone who lost her sister at the beginning of the movie. Finn should have been given more development as well. Although, I say that John Boyega did a very good job as a character, he should have been given a good story as well, but at least his baddest moment was his fight against Captain Phasma. Now, as much as I like Captain Phasma, I felt that her death was rushed as well. I think that the Battle of Krayt tried way too hard to be like the Battle of Hoth in Empire Strikes Back. It could have been better than what I saw. The scene in the throne room looked like something out of Return of the Jedi. However, what I didn't like is that we didn't know where Snoke was from until much later in Rise of Skywalker. His death felt very predictable and rushed. 
I will admit I wasn't too fond of the Porgs, but with Chewbacca, it felt lighthearted. But those crystal foxes were more useful. Although they don't show up in this movie, at least the Ewoks were more useful than the Porgs themselves. Yes, not too many like the Ewoks when they appeared in Return of the Jedi, but I will admit that I like them. The casino subplot felt more like a filler when searching for the Codebreaker. Not only that though, but it felt a bit too much MCU-ish. Honestly, I wish Lano Carisian made an appearance in this one than the Codebreaker. Lano appearing in time to help the Resistance, which is a return of another old badass to kick some ass like he did before. To be honest, I wasn't too fond of the Codebreaker, but hey, I like Benicio del Toro. He's a good actor and loved his roles in various movies such as License to Kill, The Usual Suspects, The Way of the Gun, Traffic, etc. Another thing that I did not like the way that Luke was been sent off at the end of the movie, he ascended and became a Force Ghost. To be honest, his death in this one was not as emotional and meaningful as other characters had in previous movies like Obi-Wan's death in A New Hope, Yoda's death in Return of the Jedi, and the deaths of Cassian Andor and Jin Erso in Rogue One. Last but not least, I thought the MCU style jokes were way off. I didn't feel them much, to be honest. And that is my criticism of The Last Jedi. The movie itself is not like all that bad as many people claim, but it does have its good points. The plot is not so well executed though. The Last Jedi is often considered the most controversial and divisive movie of the Star Wars series. Of course, many people have legitimate reasons for liking the movie or if they didn't like it, but the problem is that people who either loved the movie or hated the movie can take things to extremes and react towards anyone showing any type of indifference and disagreement regarding the pros and cons of the movie. For the record, although I find the movie mediocre in terms of story, I liked it when it came to acting, visuals, fight scenes, John Williams' music, of course, etc. Now, if you didn't like The Last Jedi, that's fine. I can say the same thing that if you did like The Last Jedi, that's fine as well. But my advice is to not take things out of context when it comes to disagreement and pointing out the movie's flaws and good points. And finally, do not be such a moron about it. There are people who have legitimate reasons for liking or not liking the movies, as said, Unfortunately, there are people who decide to come out of the woodwork and resort to pettiness, saying how Ryan Johnson butchered Star Wars with The Last Jedi by making it too woke, too political, too SJW, too feminist, too progressive, etc. <laughs> they even called the character of Emmalyn Haldo Admiral Gender Studies, which I believe was kind of hilariously stupid to name her that. To debug the statement that Star Wars has gone too political and woke, they should know that Star Wars was always political and woke. How so? The conflicts in Star Wars are based on real-life conflicts such as World War II and the Vietnam War as Judge Lucas was inspired by these events. And also, every piece of art and media had political themes like A Song of Ice and Fire series of books, the Final Fantasy series of video games, and so many more. The prequel trilogy shows how the Old Republic became the Galactic Empire which meant the death of democracy and the rise of a fascistic and militaristic state. Before the Empire, the Separatists were authoritarian in the planets that they occupied such as Naboo, Utapau, and various other planets as seen in Clone Wars cartoon series. Palpatine was running these events behind the scenes before and after becoming the Chancellor of the Republic and overstayed his position, which the Jedi realized that something was out of place. Those who fought against the Separatists were anti-fascist and anti-authoritarian. The Rebel Alliance was anti-authoritarian and anti-fascist, hence why they fought against the Empire. The Galactic Empire held a tyrannical grip over the galaxy and used the Death Star to destroy planets as a warning to those who resisted. But that did not stop the Rebels from fighting for the salvation of the galaxy and free it from the oppressive Galactic Empire. In the case of accusing the movie of being too feminist due to a number of women in positions of authority, including Leia and Holdo, what these complaints fail to realize is that since the original trilogy, there have been women in positions of authority. Leia led the rebellion, 
and another rebel leader was Mon Mothma, seen in Return of the Jedi. Padme Amidala led a group of rebels against the occupation of Naboo by the Separatists. Not to forget that she was involved in many battles during the Clone Wars. In The Phantom Menace, she was a queen. In Attack of the Clones, Clone Wars, and Revenge of the Sith, she was a senator representing her homeworld, Naboo. Ahsoka Tano is one of the main protagonists of Clone Wars, and Rey is the protagonist of the sequels. Just because there are many women fulfilling significant roles in Star Wars doesn't mean that it's too feminist as they claim. They say that it's too feminist because certain YouTubers feel that it's targeting men and putting them down. They hate Holo because of the way she puts Poe down and not letting him in the plan. Poe was demoted and he had no place in what the plan was all about. What was also very disgusting and reprehensible about these extremists was sending death threats to Kelly Marie Tran. But she received support from Mark Hamill, John Boyega, and even Hayden Christensen himself. Because remember, the toxicity of the Star Wars fandom did not begin with the sequel trilogy. It began with the prequels, such as sending death threats to Ahmed Best, Jake Lloyd getting bullied in school for his role as Anakin, etc. Such attitudes from these toxic fans are petty, childish, disgusting, and reprehensible. If they cannot talk about why they didn't like the movie in the most legitimate and mature way, then they're nothing but more than toxic reactionaries. There's nothing wrong with criticizing a character and point out the good, the bad, and the flaws, but attacking an actor over that character is just wrong and repulsive. Such reactionaries love to act tough and mighty online, but when confronted, they're as fragile as a glass bottle. It's not just the haters that can be toxic, but also those that love The Last Jedi can be as well. How so? There are many who take criticism of the movie out of context and resort to saying things like, you hate the movie because you hate women and people of color. Labeling people of sexism and racism for not liking a movie is just as petty and stupid as accusing a movie of being too woke, too SJW, too political, and too feminist. The movie to me is not about women putting men in their place, as certain YouTubers who defend the movie claim. The movie is about learning from failures and the conflicts that one must deal with and the consequences of certain choices that are made. Just because someone liked or didn't like the movie doesn't mean that you have to be such a moron and attack them for such things. There are many who still believe that after five years, the movie is bad. There are people who were harsh on the movie, then decided to give it a second chance by watching it again and their criticism softened up in a way. I still believe that in terms of story, it's mediocre, but after seeing it again, my criticism has softened up in a way. So was the movie really that bad as so many claim? No. It's not perfect, but it has its pros and cons. Just like any other Star Wars movie, TV show, and video game in general. Sure, some Star Wars movies I did not like. Others, I did. I never sided with the so-called fandom menace for all these threats against Kelly Marie Tran, John Boyega, Daisy Ridley, Ryan Johnson, etc. For if I did, I would be in the same level of misery as those who hated it. Because as they say, misery loves company. And also, I'd end up no better than those who name call anyone that didn't like the movie and just drown in their echo chambers, removing comments that disagree with them and insulting them just to put them in their place. And that's not the kind of person I want to be. Whether you like The Last Jedi or not, never submit to such pettiness and stupidity. It's up to you to decide whether you liked it or not. If you liked it or disliked it for legitimate reasons, then that's very well. But if you're someone who labels people with words like simp, or any type of ist, whether they liked it or not, then that is low level of pettiness. This is John of Video Games in the World. May the Force be with you.